Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've got the program installed, you've verified that it works, but you really don't know how to do much of anything with it. This video series is intended to help people just like you, to help you learn how to rendezvous with the space station, how to go to the moon and do other interesting things with Orbiter. Now, in this particular segment of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're going to look at how to return back to Earth from the Moon, and we're going to take a, uh, an absolute beginner approach to doing so. So we're going to avoid using some of the more complicated MFDs like Transex and uh, IMFD, and instead we're just going to use the core MFDs that come with Orbiter. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now you'll be able to follow along with this by going to the Delta Glider folder. And one of the default scenarios that comes with Orbiter is uh, labeled Brighton Beach. We're going to go ahead and pick that scenario and get it started. Let me go ahead and switch my camera view while that's loading. And this is a good scenario because it has you already landed on Brighton Beach and you're fueled up and ready to go. So you don't have to do any uh, you don't have to do any maintenance with, uh, you know, the scenario editors or anything like that. So we'll just uh, press F1 to take a look outside to see how things look here. Let me switch to that mode. And we can see here that we have the Delta Glider landed on, what is it, run uh, landing pad number four. Now your particular Brighton Beach will look a little bit different than this if you're using the stock uh, orbiter installation. Uh, this this particular Brighton Beach has been enhanced a little bit. Uh, so just something to note that if yours looks different, don't worry, it's, it's, that's normal. Now, getting back to the Earth from the Moon is actually pretty simple. One thing you need to understand about going back to Earth is that we're basically, it's all, if you want to think of it like this, it's almost like a downhill ride all the way. We just have to get far enough away from the Moon for the Earth to basically start pulling us back in. And as long as we can do that, then we'll get back home with no problem. So, whereas when we go out to, you know, when we go to the Moon from the Earth, we actually have to do a, a pretty good job of targeting the Moon or else we'll, we'll miss it entirely. But the return trip is actually much simpler because, again, the Moon itself is actually in orbit around the Earth. So basically all we have to do is get up off the moon, then get away from the moon a little bit so that the moon's gravity isn't constantly pulling on our vessel. And as long as, long as we can get away from the moon by enough, then the Earth itself will just pull us back down. You know, it'll pull us back in. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, there's really not anything that we need to do in terms of, you know, referencing the Earth and making sure that we arrive back at Earth during the day or night. That that you can do some of that, but it's, it's not really necessary. So we're going to go ahead and skip that part. I'm going to bring up Orbit MFD on this side, and we're going to change the projection to ship like we always do. We're going to change the distance so that it's PEA and APA. Frame of reference for this particular case doesn't matter. We don't even really need the second MFD, so I'm just going to shut it off so we have one less thing to look at. Now, getting into orbit around the moon is very simple. It's, much, it's actually quite a bit easier than it is to get into orbit around Earth because w and on Earth you have to you know, get up out of the atmosphere and then get up to a high velocity. With the moon, there's really no, there's no atmosphere to speak of. You know, there's a few dust particles that settle around the, uh, the surface, but there's really no atmosphere to worry about. So we don't have to worry about climbing real steeply like we do when we're on Earth. You know, we want to pitch up to 40 or 50 degrees at least to climb up out of the thick atmosphere. We don't have to do anything like that on the moon. All we have to do is hover up off the pad and we can basically go straight forward from that point. Now, realistically, um, you would want to get up to at least, you know, 15 or 20 kilometers when getting into orbit around the moon. Because as I spoke of prior in the prior videos, the highest peak on the moon is about 11 kilometers. So to be realistic, we want to be above that point. But for practical purposes, you actually can get into orbit around the moon uh, at an altitude of just like one meter. You know, so just something to keep in the back of your mind. Now, to get up uh, off the landing pad, we're just going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and level, 
turn on the level horizon autopilot that's probably a good idea for people that are brand new that way you don't have to worry about the vessel tilting either way or pitching up and down when you're as you're hovering up so turn on the uh, level horizon and then we're going to press zero on the numeric keypad in order to give us some hover thrust and you can see over here the hover engines are starting and we don't want a lot notice that i'm just climbing very gradually that's really all we want don't go to you know full power on the hover engines or anything like that once we've begun hovering we can press g to raise the landing gear and then we want rotation thrusters so you know press the slash key until you hear it say rotation rotation and we want to rotate to 90 degrees so just watch your hud this thing here in front of you watch it until it says 90 degrees and once we're at 90 we're going to kill rotation make sure that we're facing 90 notice we're still going up slightly now i'm going to press the plus key and hold it and tap the control key to lock the uh, main engines into place now I'm going to turn off the level horizon autopilot because I need to have pitch control so I'm gonna press L that shuts off the level horizon now I'm gonna pitch up just slightly notice we're only going we're only pitching up here by maybe four or five degrees or maybe even that's only about three degrees you don't need to pitch up a lot and you don't want to because you'll just have a really you'll end up with the high apoapsis uh, if you pitch up too aggressively and we just don't need to do that now getting to up to orbital velocity on the moon happens very quickly because orbital velocity around the moon is about 1680 uh, kilometer uh, 80 meters per second whereas on the earth you know we have to get all the way up to 7500 uh, meters per second true air speed or 7800 meters per second orbital velocity so here at 700 in 50 meters per second you know we're almost uh you know we're not too far away from orbital velocity already we've got we're, we're halfway there so now notice i'm already pitched down level with the horizon because we've, we're still climbing we've got all the pit we've got all the ascent that we need notice that my apoapsis is going up my target apoapsis is for the moon is usually about 20 kilometers uh, 20 to 30 is good anything higher is unnecessary anything lower and you know 20, 20 is a good number. Let's just say it that way. And it looks like I'm actually going to reach 20 kilometers much sooner than I wanted to, so I'm going to kill the engines here in a second. There we are. Engines are off. And the reason I and the reason I reached uh, the higher apoapsis sooner than I wanted was because I didn't reduce my hover engines all the way down. I didn't notice that. That's a mistake on my part. So as you're getting into, uh, as you're doing your ascent, remember to press the period key until the hover engines are all the way off otherwise it will affect your apoapsis but now we are uh, basically ready to go with orbit circularization you know it's very simple to get into orbit around the moon so I'm going to press H a couple of times to get over to the orbit uh, bring up the orbit HUD and we're doing the same thing here we're going to raise the other side of our orbit Re refer back to the raising and lowering our orbit in order to raise the other side of our orbit we have to do a prograde burn at apoapsis and we know that apoapsis is coming up because we can see the bubble here and we can see the time to the apoapsis is just 150 seconds it's not too far away so let me press the prograde autopilot so that i can get the vessel into position and give the autopilot time to settle now because we have quite a bit of, of uh, quite a bit more to go i still need to add about 400 meters per second um, I'm probably not going to want to wait till I'm down to just five seconds like I normally would. We're probably gonna, I'm going to need to start the orbit circularization burn a little bit sooner. In uh, later videos, we'll talk about some tools that you can use. Some, it'll, be, it'll require some additional downloads, but we can talk about some tools that you can use that will help automate this task for you. Because because once you have circularized your orbit and you've done enough raising and lowering your orbit manually, and you know and you know how it works and you understand it it's actually more realistic to use other tools that will uh, uh, basically do it for you. You basically program it in ahead of time and then it executes the instruction at the appropriate time. That's more realistic. That's, the, that's more, along the long, more along the lines of how things would work in the real world. So let's go ahead and warp time forward, get down to about, uh, let's, let's say 15 seconds. Just get, and then I'm guessing at this point, I don't even know. 15 seconds is probably too long, so let's go 10. So I'm going to go full power on the main engines. I can see my time to the apoapsis is counting down, so I'm not starting the burn too soon. 
And again, we only have to add about 400 meters a second to have a circular orbit. So I'm just going to watch until the PEA comes up. And I should have probably started that maybe a little bit sooner. Yeah, but it'll be okay. It, it was close enough, but I, instead of 10 seconds, it probably should have been 12 or 13. So now we're, we're coming up on orbit circularization, so we want to get ready to kill the engines. Kill the engines. And I kind of overshot that a little bit. Translation. So, and this is unnecessary, but just to be a perfectionist about it, I'm going to translate backwards a little bit. And you can see the ECC coming down. And let me turn prograde off and maybe do a little bit of lateral translation to help uh, bring the PEA up to 20. And it brings the APA down. And there we go, we're very circular at this point. Good enough. Okay, now, in order to get back to the Earth, we're not going to use the uh, transfer MFD. Um, you can use it, but I don't really think that it helps to use it. I think it's actually easier, uh, especially for the absolute beginner, I think it's easier to get back to the Earth not using not using uh, transfer MFD. Instead, what we're going to do is uh, kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it a blind burn, but we're going to go around the moon until we actually see the Earth on the horizon. The Earth will appear, uh, it'll appear a little bit below the HUD. So if we're facing straight forward like this, we won't actually see it. So we have two options. We can press F1 and we can look for the, we can look for when we see the Earth here, or from inside the cockpit, we can kind of scroll down like this. So we're going to warp time forward till we get around the moon. And notice we're not doing any kind of plane alignment here either. So I'm just warping time forward at 100. Don't want to go any faster than that because when the Earth appears, I want to do the burn right away. I don't want to overshoot. So we're just uh, warping time forward. And the Earth will be appearing here on the, um, let me make sure I'm looking forward and then down. The Earth will be appearing down here somewhere very shortly. Let me do this though, because my ship's getting out of orientation. Let me go prograde real quick. Okay, and now let's look down again. There's Mars, I believe, if I press F9. Yeah, that's Mars. So now we'll go forward at 100 again. And as soon as the Earth appears, I'm going to go back to real time. Okay, there's the Earth. You can see it right there. So now it's time to do our burn. So we're going to go to the prograde position. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a burn until the ECC is 1.35, and then we don't really care about the last two numbers. So we'll press the plus key, hold it, tap the control to lock the engines. In our measurement here, what we're, what we're looking to measure, instead of measuring the delta V countdown, or instead of measuring other things, we're measuring when the ECC says 1.35, that will mean that we have a hyperbolic trajectory for the, for the moon, which means we're going to escape the moon. We're gonna, we have a velocity that is sufficiently fast enough to get us out away from the moon. And then we need a little bit of additional velocity to make sure that we get uh, captured in to the Earth and have a fairly reasonable PEA uh, periapsis at the Earth by the time we warp time forward. So I'm just watching the ECC. Again, it's uh, 0 0.8, and we're going for 1.35. And there's a pretty good margin for error there. It doesn't have to be exactly 1.35. But this is just a good measurement for the absolute beginner. And as we're closing in on that number, I'll go ahead and back off the main engines here at about 1.3. There we are. And there's 1.35, and I overshot it the again uh, by... Uh, that 6.0, but don't worry about that. There's a good margin for error here. So whatever 1.35 and or even 1.34 is, is plenty uh, sufficient. Okay, so we are now done with 
uh, the moon as our reference here. So let's reference the Earth. And let's again uh, make sure that projection is ship. It's unfortunate I have to take that. Pause this. Hey, welcome back to the video. Sorry about that interruption. I think that's actually the very first time that's happened to me, and I don't want to start re start over recording, so I'm just going to pick up from this point. Uh, we uh, did our, eject our ejection burn to head back to Earth, and so now I've referenced Earth in the orbit, uh, orbit MFD. And we've got the projection set the ship, the distance set to PEA, APA, how we need. And in this case, the frame of reference doesn't matter, so it can be either ECL or EQU. Now, the only thing that we have to do is uh, warp time forward similar to how we did when we left the Earth. We needed to warp time forward until we got you know, out to a point where we could start doing some kind of mid-course corrections. That's exactly what we need to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and press T a couple of times. And there's really not a lot to do or even talk about at this point. We'll just kind of see so if I can kill rotate there. See the moon as we're pulling away. That's the Earth there. And as we're pulling away from the moon, we'll look at it because it's a bit more interesting than looking at the Earth at this point. And we'll go to a thousand. And we'll come back inside. Now you can see that uh, we do have. You know, we are we are basically captured by Earth at this point. Um, we don't have a strong gravitational influence from the Earth yet. The, the moon is still the strongest source of gravity, but we'll cross over here in a moment to the point where the Earth, uh, rather the sun, which is now, becomes the strongest source of gravity while we're sort of in the in-between stages of these two bodies. And here, when the gravitational influence of Earth reaches about 0 0.50, it will then become the strongest source of gravity and we can start thinking about doing any kinds of mid-course corrections that we want to do for our trip back to Earth. So I'm just going to continue to warp time forward. Let me even go out to 10,000 at this point. And now Earth is the strongest source of gravity, so I'm going to go, going to go back to real time. And I like to uh, go prograde at this point. When you're in between bodies, uh, you can't go. You can't use the prograde autopilot to have it automatically reference Earth. If you do that, when it says orbit Sun, you'll actually go into the prograde position relative to the Sun. And that's not very useful. So it helps to make sure that you're that you're at the point where the gravitational influence of Earth has become the dominating force. And this, and you know that when this turns green, and when this says orbit Earth instead of orbit Sun. And when that happens, you can then use the prograde retrograde pilots, and it's all relative to Earth at that point. So I'm going to turn off the prograde autopilot for a moment. I'm going to press T a couple of times, and what I want to watch now is I want to see what's happening with the PEA. I'm noticing that as I'm going toward the Earth, the PEA is continuing to increase. And remember, the PEA is the periapsis. It's my lowest point of orbit. Right now, this is saying that when I get back to Earth, my lowest point of orbit is going to be 3,640 kilometers, and remember, it's going up as I go forward. So actually, by the time I get back to Earth, it might be more like 4,000 or something like that. It's a little hard to say because, again, when you're this far away from a, a body, uh, the PEA, the APA, this, this information isn't extremely accurate. It doesn't become very accurate until you're much closer in. Having said that, we can still start making mid-course corrections out at this point because we can see that this is going up and we don't want it to go up anymore. In fact, it's already much higher than we want it to be. So I'm going to go to the prograde position and most likely at this point, I'm going to want to turn the vessel minus 90 degrees so that I can do some inward burns. Uh, this is a large enough number that just using translation thrusters isn't going to be sufficient. Rotation. So when we did this at the moon, you remember we went uh, minus 90 degrees this way in order to do the inward burn. I'm going to do the same thing here. And 360 minus 90 is 270. So this gives this is a right angle to my direction of flight. And we'll take a look at what that looks like on the external view. So relative to the Earth, I'm now 
facing, you know, this way, I'm facing sort of in toward the planet. If I needed to do an outward burn, for example, if my periapsis was showing a negative number, then I would want to burn out away from the Earth or outward from my orbit. This, In this particular instance, I need to burn inward toward my orbit or toward the planet. And we need to, I'm going to bring the periapsis down. I want a target periapsis in the neighborhood of uh, 200 kilometers because we're not going to use the atmosphere as a break in this example. So since I know that it's continuing to go up as I get closer to the Earth, I'm going to bring it all the way down to like 150 kilometers. So full power on the main engines. You can see that comes down rapidly. And I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that this is offsetting. If you really Translate want to, you rotation. can keep up with it by putting in a little bit of rotation as you do the burn. But it's not significant. See the periapsis is coming down nicely. Again, we want a target of about 200, but since it's continuing to go up as I move forward, I'm going to bring it all the way down to 150. Eh, close enough. We'll go with that. Now, let me kill rotation. And let's warp time forward, and we'll go out to, to the point where the gravitational influence is about 0 0.80. By that point, uh, the, the information here becomes much more accurate, and we'll have a much better idea of what our actual PEA will be by the time we get back to Earth. So warping time forward until this says 0 0.80. Go to 1,000, go to 10,000. You can see that's continuing to climb. And I could have, I could have even come down a you know, quite a bit more than I did. Okay, now we're, we're past the point where 0 0.80, so this number is now uh, much more reasonably accurate. Translation, rotation. So I'm just going to go back to 270 since I'm facing this direction, and this time I'm just going to use a little bit of translation. Okay. Translation. And we're going to bring it down to, actually I guess we can still use the main engines. Again, we want a target of about 200, and since it's still going up as I move forward, we're going to go for a 190. I have 188, good enough. And now we'll go forward until the uh, gravitational influence is uh, like 0 0.95. Actually, let me go prograde so we can see the Earth. And you can see that this is much, you can see how much more accurate this is when we're in closer. I think we're going to be fine. We're not going to have to do any more adjustments, so I'm just going to go ahead and let let the uh, vessel go all the way forward to Earth. If I wanted to be very picky about it, I could, at this point, Rotation. do a little bit of translation outward because my PEA is about 8.2 kilometers lower than I really want it to be. So if I want, just with a little bit of translation at this point, I can fix that and set it to, say, that number, and then the little bit more that it goes up by the time I get back to, uh, by the time I get to periapsis, it should be much closer to 200. But we're almost home. We're, uh, gravitational influence is 0 0.96. The time to the peri uh, periapsis is 11,240 uh, seconds. So I'm just going to warp time forward to get down to the periapsis. When we get down to maybe uh, five or 600 seconds, we're going to turn our vessel to the retrograde position so that we can do our braking burn. This is not an efficient way to get back to Earth but it is easy for the absolute beginner to wrap their head around and to do themselves. Okay, we're getting pretty close now to periapsis. We can kind of see how we, are, how we look. Here's our vessel, and we're not too far away from getting down to the lowest point. So let's go to the retrograde position so that we can begin preparing ourselves for the upcoming uh, main engine braking burn. Use a little bit of time warp to speed up that rotation. Now we're going to warp time forward until we get down to around 100 seconds. And there's one thing I'll mention about the braking burn that we're going to do slightly differently than what we did uh, for the lunar orbit insertion. Instead of using the retrograde autopilot to keep ourselves positioned straight at the retrograde, uh, we're actually going to we're going to offset our vessel ever so slightly because the burn takes enough time that having the vessel set <clears throat> using the retrograde autopilot is, is less than ideal.
and it can actually cause problems. Just watching the time count down here, we need to get a little bit closer to periapsis. Press F1 if you want to take a look and see <clears throat> how everything looks. There's the moon way back there. <clears throat> and again, around 100 seconds is when it's going to be time to begin this burn. Okay, we're getting pretty close to that point, so let's... Uh, Go back to real time. Let's press retrograde just to get the vessel positioned. Once it's positioned and settled, we're actually going to turn retrograde off. <clears throat> rotation. And bring up the rotation. Uh, art, set your RCS mode to rotation. Now turn retrograde off. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually rotate our vessel a few degrees off center and the reason for this is because we're not our, our orbit is so elliptical that by the time we actually get to uh, the point where we want to begin the burn we'll end up what will end up happening is we'll end up passing periapsis and or our burn will cause our periapsis to to go down and we'll it we could it could it, it could potentially go so low that you would end up in the atmosphere okay we're coming up on the time to burn 100 seconds and I'm beginning the burn and notice again I'm just rotating ever so slightly out to the side of retrograde and I'm watching my PEA notice it's counting down and I don't want it to count down so I'm going to actually rotate out a little bit more about right there and now it seems to be holding it's holding at that point it's not counting down it's not now it's starting to count up a little bit I'm actually okay with that if it counts up ever so slightly, I just don't want it to count down because what will end up happening if you just use the retrograde autopilot, your your PEA could potentially go all the way down into the atmosphere and you do not, I mean, that would be disastrous. Now, as we go forward, as we go you know, farther into the burn, we can begin slowly rotating the vessel back toward retrograde and that will prevent this number from uh, counting up too far because we also don't want our PEA to climb really high. We want to keep it right there around 200 kilometers or 300, whichever number you choose. But again, if you just have the retrograde autopilot on throughout this whole burn, then your PEA will go down the whole time and we don't want that. So we're holding very nicely right here around that 198.6, which is very close to 200 kilometers. And they, we're just going to do this burn until our, you know, ECC is a 0, 0.000 across the board. Of course, we'll slow down things once we get closer to the bottom. Again, just watch for the for the beginning part of the burn. Just watch your PEA. Make sure that it's not counting up or down. If it's okay, notice we're coming up to periapsis here, so we're at the lowest point of our orbit might rotate out a little bit to slow that down so that we kind of stay here at periapsis a little bit longer. Now we're past periapsis. As you pass periapsis, you actually want to have uh, your rotation start going inward a bit because notice my PEA is counting down. It went from 198.6, now we're down to 0.3, and here, at this point, it's actually counting up a bit. So this is how we can control this burn. You just kind of rotate in and out a little bit to keep, keep your PEA under control. It's going to rotate in a bit because we're still counting up. Now it's counting down, so I'm going to go back a little bit. Okay, we're at APA is down to 2,000 kilometers, so we're getting near the bottom of the burn. Okay, PEA is starting to count back up, so we're rotation's good. It helps too when you get down to this point, uh, when you get down to maybe 500 kilometers, to start backing off the main engines. Okay, we're down to 800 kilometers, 700, 600. 500, 
and rotate in some more and kill the engines there and notice that as I got really close to the bottom the PEA started really counting down quickly so I'm actually gonna rotate in quite a bit and just do a little bit more on the burn here in a little bit more because the PEA is still counting down now the PEA is going up just finishing off the circularization maybe back up just a little bit to 230 maybe a little bit more and we're, we're good enough at this point but I'm just trying to show how to you know how to complete the circularization without having to go all the way around to apoapsis and periapsis at this point okay we're that PA still coming down at that number so let's rotate to 240 Still counting down. Let's go 250. Okay, there we're counting up. Now we're counting down. But we're getting a little bit more circular with each time. You can see our APA is all the way to 209 now. A little bit of main engine. APA is coming down. PEA is going up. Okay, we'll go with that. That's that's pretty good. Zero point. 0006 that's that's definitely good enough for coming back from the moon and using the main engines okay so now we'll just go to the prograde position here and we'll take a look at how we look on a map mfd kind of see where we ended up at at earth since we didn't do any targeting or anything just set the display lines to orbit plane and we can see here we're very much kind of in an equatorial type of orbit so if we wanted to land at Cape Canaveral we would probably um, we probably just do a lot of you know a lot of cross range cross range gliding as opposed to trying to align the base or anything like that but that's gonna wrap it up for this part of the video uh, we just want to do a video to show how you know to get up off the moon and come back to earth uh, using the basic tools without having to download anything if you like the video Go ahead, and hit the like, go ahead and hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.